Greetings and welcome to Matrix Revealed presentation 30. I thought I'd have a look at the Ipswich Museum building. Um, quite revealing in its uh, wonderful brick architecture. So we we'll just go back to the uh, Fountain of Knowledge Wikipedia and it says here Ipswich Museum is a registered museum of culture, history and natural heritage located on High Street Ipswich in the county town of Suffolk and uh, this is um, the main interior hallway um, it's got beautiful railings um, what we call that Victorian style I hope the um, glass cases are still there there used to be um, cabinets with all manner of butterflies and moths under cloth that you had to lift back to look at which seem to have disappeared and I have a feeling the museum has been very much modernized in recent times with the fashionable perceived history Anyway, um, the original foundation of 1846, devoted primarily to natural history, was moved to new premises in the High Street in 1881. So this building that is shown here is allegedly built in 1881, but of course <laughs> you just cannot find photos of it. And then we look at the early history. The museum was founded in 1846 and opened in December 1847 in Museum Street. Um, then newly laid out with specific remit to educate the working classes in natural history. So I wonder if that's um, tied in with this whole dinosaur myth. Um, this is very interesting as well. Um, it looks very similar to the original building, but it says uh, Ipswich Museum facade of proposed new building, but I suspect it's like many other of, of these sketches there, buildings that were built and, uh, and no longer exist today. But um, very interesting, again, you've got this, um, this three, I forget the name, it's a try something. Um, where you've got the the doorway and then two recessed windows either side and of course you've got these pillars here as well and it looks to be like the Phoenician seashells and of course four columns here I've just noticed as well so we'll just uh, have another quick look at this I mean this is another one of these narratives so the museum gained national repute under the second president, the Reverend Professor John Stephen Henslow, blah, 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 who had been Charles Darwin's mentor at Cambridge University. So there, I think, is um, it's pushing the Darwinian theory by the looks of it in these early years of this museum. And we have another look at the interior here. This is, I think it said 1875. Now, this is... I think the older building um, in, that's in Museum Street, no longer in use as a museum. But certainly these um, display cases were very similar to what I saw with the butterflies in, um, probably in the 1970s and possibly even into the 1980s. Um, but interestingly, when we come on to Yes, the new, the new museum building, another photo of it here, circa 1890. And um, you'll notice straight away you've got the lower windows because this clearly is one of those mud flooders again um, with far lower floors than we see today. Um, that's evident on one side of the building anyway. Um, but it's interesting how... I mean, 1880, 1881, I get this idea um, of museums when they have these first 
cornerstones or foundation stones. There's normally a ceremony that, of course, like all these buildings from this era, do you think I could find any photos on um, Google? Again, here's a close-up of the um, frontage. It's not a very wide road, so it's very difficult to actually get a decent photo of the building. And here we have another one with a close-up of the centre and another one here showing in detail what is on that top section. Um, very Phoenician in its um, style, of course. But um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting how something that opens in 1881, you just cannot find any... Uh, information anyway that's the the so-called history on wiki you can read about that if you so wish <laughs> um and take it with a pinch of salt now i i want to go on to an adjoining um road called fonaru road which is named after a family of wealthy family of french descent now this is probably one of my most favorite streets for old Housing. This is using the Google Maps Street View and something I've noticed with this whole subject of Tataria, um, even allowing for the new level and putting in a door, it's the heights of these doors and windows that I'm particularly drawn to. Uh, I think we're looking in the region of about possibly about 12 foot in height for this front door, maybe even 15. And obviously the windows on these two levels are the same. But when you get up to these, what we would call attic rooms, or what we are told were servants quarters, you'll notice how much smaller they are. And I've noticed this with a lot of these buildings we ascribe to Tataria that, um, we have this same uh, situation where you have massive windows, ma massive doorways, and progressively as you go higher, the windows come more to the size of people that we would expect today. So we just go along and to another one here, um, which I think, well, th this one is very interesting as well. Um, you've got this odd angled, doorway which looks almost like an afterthought notice also the cream brick um contrasting greatly with this red brick behind now i do wonder um if this has been added on in more recent years you don't really get any um so replication of the building style as such in these front walls as well but another very interesting one here um, we'll make this sort of the last one again large windows but then you've got a smaller one here but this tower I find particularly fascinating because if you were to allow for some sort of stairway going up into this the actual floor space that is left this is fairly square there's another the next, the adjoining house, these are private residential or been turned into flats because they're massive size, but they're not going to be very practical as bedrooms. Um, I would imagine you, you, you might at a, at a push get a double bed into one of these if you can get it up the stairs. Um, but what the true purpose of these is, is open to question. Um, they are rather interesting buildings. Um, there's another one here. And you'll notice you've got the four points on the corner. So I, I wonder if there was actually something like a spire or some sort of antiquitech here as well. And again, you've got the same progressively smaller windows as you go up. So I thought I'd just sort of add that into the mix. I think... Um, it's right when we talk of um, these styles. It was a video I watched um, from Jamie, A Plain Truth For You. Um, there is definitely distinct cutoffs um, 
with these different building styles. Um, interesting here how this modern one, it just doesn't fit at all with the splendor and attention to detail of these old ones. Now I would say these are mostly cream brick up here, but I would say that they are, um, oh, we're going the wrong way now. Um, I'd say they are mostly what I would call Tatarian um, in style, um, as opposed to what we would call the true sort of Greco-Romano. Um, another very interesting one here. I don't know if I can pull this down a bit. Um, again, these massive, massive structures, um, totally impractical as family homes today, unless you have lots of money, and also very impractical with these steep steps as well. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to have a, um, say, a toddler of maybe about three years old, four years old, um, I would be very um, concerned with how with them getting up and down these stairs, um, these steps, because one slip and you would seriously you could well you could crack your skull open on these. These are clearly additions, and I mean the this, these just just don't feel or look right. And some of these look like they. It seems almost pointless apart from as decoration why would you have this balcony here um, there's a lot of unanswered questions with these buildings um, that does need careful study I've noticed um, oh notice there seems to be some sort of spire or something here whether that is a remnant but it does seem strange you've got these buildings in this in this road um, it's a it's a one of the steepest hills in Ipswich. I wonder if I can if I can pull this back um, to the street view, give you an idea. Um, so we come back again. So here at the bottom of the picture is the basically the town centre. Now I've already featured the natural springs in this Christchurch Park and how they run under the Bethesda Church at the bottom here into Upper Brook Street. And it's this road here, it goes up very steeply and then continues to climb. And the museum is in, this is the high street here. The museum is about halfway along. Um, seems a bit of a strange sighting for the building and you have to wonder if it was the uh, original purpose or whether this is just official narrative but like so many other buildings 1880 era you just cannot find photos of opening ceremonies of the buildings being built um, obviously I haven't looked beyond the Wikipedia on this and it would need a lot more digging but on first um, investigation it follows the pattern with so many of these other buildings all around the world where you just cannot find photos of them in there. Um, and yet they're with, well within the photographic age where you would think something as important as a new mu museum would be featured by the local newspaper in a sketch, if not a photograph. So uh, just a few things to think about there with the um, buildings. now. I'd recommend looking at Martin Leaker, Flat Earth British Channel and the links to the Gallica sites because you will um, see images, um, lithographs and things showing people of different sizes, different heights, um, which seem to be li living concurrently. And this seems to be borne out in these differences in window heights. Maybe. The, the height of people today were more like a servant class for the taller ones. Often um, you'll get depictions, particularly in Egypt, um, which they tell us is they're shown bigger due to their status of being kings and queens or pharaohs. Or, um, but is it or is it an accurate depiction um, going again by these window heights? I would say what we are shown in those old drawings and things is accurate and they are not fantasy so uh, 
Anyway, a few things to think about there. I will be making another video shortly. For those interested, this is the second movement of the Bruckner Symphony No. 4, the Ro Romantica, or Romantic Symphony as it was called. So, ta-ta for now.